Hey, welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith with. It's the interview series presented by WFPK at WFPK.org. Consequence and the Consequence Podcast Network. Thanks as always for making your way here, for checking out the series. Of course, you know what to do. If you like what you see, what you hear, hit that subscribe button. I put out three new interviews every single week, new and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So it's a great way to keep up with all of your favorite artists. And so excited today, Tom Payne is here and he's got a lot going on. Hello, sir. Hello. Nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you too. Uh, you do have a lot going on. Uh, we got movies. We got uh, we got kids and family. We got uh, just just about everything. How's uh, how's your year going so far? Because I feel like it's and maybe it's that's a way for a lot of th- people because you know there was pandemic and everything stopped and then you work again and then there's a strike and then all of a sudden everything comes out at once. So it looks like you're busy. Are you busy? Yeah. Uh, I feel I got very lucky. I made these projects that are coming out this year. I have three films. Uh, The first film coming out March 8th is Imaginary with Blumhouse. Uh, And then I have a couple of films coming out in the summer, the Horizon Westerns with um, Kevin Costner. And I filmed all of those. I filmed Imaginary just before the strike. Like we finished a couple of days before the strike happened. And I feel very fortunate that, um, that I managed to get that in because, yeah, the strike shut everything down. And if you didn't get anything done uh, in that time or even before that time and you have nothing else coming out this year, you probably don't have something done that will come out until next year. You know, mm-hmm. so I feel really fortunate that I'm I'm visible because, uh, <laughs> yeah, as you said, we have family and I can't believe it's the end of January already. We have another baby on the way. And um, <laughs> yeah, it's it's it, the second uh, pregnancy all happens very fast. Oh. Um, but at the same time, I have to. Uh, get back to work. I was very fortunate with our son that um, I had just finished a job and I could take some time off. But now because of the strike and everything, like I, I do need to get back to work. So I think it's going to get even more hectic um, because we're going to have newborns and then I'm going to have to work. There it <laughs> so is again. we'll see how that goes. What a, you know, it's 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 always been a weird industry, right? I mean, it, do a job and then done and then you're done for a while and you don't have to do a job. And yeah, and, and that's when the life happens. And um I, I want to get back to that in a minute. I'll tie that back around later on because, but first, I, I want to talk about this new movie you're talking about, Imaginary, mm. uh, Bloomhouse. So we're talking, uh, we're talking a horror movie. The full on. Yeah. I, I was reading here: woman returns to her childhood home to discover that the imaginary friend she left behind is very real and unhappy that she abandoned him. Yeah. <laughs> it's a fun uh, twist. You know, it's one of those movies that uh, my agent sent it to me, and he said you know that it's going to be um you can see the marketing when you read the when you read the script you're like oh yeah this has got a teddy bear and and literally the poster ended up being what we were saying on set it was like oh immediately the poster is like, like the teddy bear and imaginary across the top and um it's just a great uh like a kind of iconic figure you can use like in in a similar way to megan you know name of the character megan and it was the uh, animatronic um girl it's the same with this. It's like the teddy bear is the center of everything. Um, and it has, you know, creepy, my, my daughter's uh, in the movie. So I um, uh, I have two daughters and a previous marriage, which I've left behind. And um, I married Dewanda's character, uh, Jessica, and we move into her childhood home. And um, my youngest daughter discovers a teddy bear in the house. And um, and the film happens. <laughs> and the film happens, right, right. And um, <laughs> and always the fun about when you're talking about a horror movie or something like this, like what, what you can't say, what you can say. I know that's a big thing. Mm-hmm. I, it, it's interesting though, you know. And this is what I was alluding to a minute ago, because in the preview we see this little girl who, of course, you know, like every great horror movie with a child and the serious face and and everything, and like. As a dad, does that ever cross? Because creepy kids on set and what they're going through, like now that you've become a father, do you see that any difference? I mean, there's definitely, so my son is two now and, um, you know, we read him books at night and he falls asleep in in our arms or whatever. And and he, (laughs) there's definitely moments when you look at them and you're like, wow, if you like turned your head at me right now and didn't say anything, it would be really creepy. Like, you know, because kids have this, real imaginary world and my son is um in the last few months just really started to use his imagination and you're very aware that there is a lot going on in there but a lot that you can't really get to like it's in their heads they're not going to tell you i mean he can't yet and he's just starting to speak but like 
there's so much going on in there and they're thinking so much like we have friends who have uh, little kids and um I have to say it's mostly little girls who are really looking at you and it seems like they're judging you you know little boys are a bit more simple and knock around and stuff but little girls are like sizing you up and, and it's really weird and yeah. creepy um yeah there's a lot going on with, with little kids and a lot that you they can't explain to you you know yeah, the uh, the way you can stand in front of a huge crowd and be okay, but when a you know a five year old can tear you apart, absolutely, you a look. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. <laughs> with um, with like with horror movies, and so you know, I, I'm going to reference Prodigal Son, which is not horror, but you know has it had things. horror. Yeah, we touched right. on it. Yeah, and 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 of course, Walking Dead. When it's horror, does that bring something different as an actor than than not? I mean. Acting is acting, but but when you get into genre, does it change noticeably? I think it depends on the type of horror. Um, so yeah, Walking Dead, I guess was, it's a horror show and that was very like visceral and bloody. Um, and then in Prodigal Son, we did a bit more kind of, we did some gross out stuff, but we did some jump cuts and everything. And, and the Blumhouse movies and those type of horror movies do include a lot of the jump cuts and everything, which is um, a lot in the editing but you do know that when you're doing them on set uh you know when when there's a jump cut um when there's like a jump scare happening and stuff um but it really pops in the cinema because it's all about the sound as well and the build up and how the sequence is edited together um but they're a lot of fun to do i was really excited to work uh with blumhouse because i admire what they've done with that company and and uh, the simplicity of the stories and um and yeah, I, I, this is my first, I just realized like this is my first American studio movie. I've worked for uh, Universal Studios in Europe and different production companies, but I've never done um, a wide release American cinema film. And, and so I'm really excited for all the stuff that we're doing, all of the build up um, and the premiere and stuff. It's all a fun ride so far. Yeah. And it, it, you know what you were saying a minute ago with the marketing too, just what you can do with that on a movie yeah. like this that you can't with other stuff. I mean, that it yeah. just, you know, I don't know how much you get, you get to be involved specifically in all that, but that's where the fun as a, as a, as a viewer, as an audience member, that's where it really comes into play. I mean, hearing about, you know, the, with the first trailer where they tell you to close your eyes and you have to imagine and like, yeah, that's where yeah, it I'm starts. Fun. Right. I mean, like that's uh that's fun stuff. And, and Bloomhouse, I mean, geez, to work with them, and they've become maybe the biggest name in this genre right now. Just yeah, they've definitely. Apart. Yeah. Um, and now they've teamed up with James Wan's company, uh, Atomic Monster, who is the other um, biggest horror, horror company. So now they're this big horror conglomerate. And um, it's great because you know that they know what they're doing, you know, and if you go up to them and say, like, how's the movie? Like, what, what do you think about it? And they're very positive uh, about it and very excited. And, and you can tell because it's a um, it's done in conjunction with Lionsgate, Lionsgate are releasing it. So we've been talking to the press team over there and they're all really excited. As you said, like, it's very fun to promote a movie like this because there's lots of different things that you can do. And I mean, it's fun for me to think of ideas, you know, like as an, as an actor, you read the script and you play the character on the page, but this is real, like you can come up with really fun um adverts commercials and but and also like i was saying you know the teddy bear can pop up at nfl games or it can pop up in different it's like it's a really easy thing to carry around and put in places so i'm excited to see um what they're going to do with that and it's great for tiktok and instagram reels and all that kind of stuff and they've already started doing um like fun psas and uh little things to get people excited yeah are you able you know when, when you shoot these things of course Again, movie magic, what we see at the end is different than when you're on the set. Are, are Do you find that you're able on a movie like this to forget the reality of the situation when you're watching it? Yeah, I mean, there are, there are lots of moments in the movie that uh, I'm not in, which is really fun to see uh, put together. Obviously, I read the script, so I know what, what happens. But it's really fun to see uh, the horror moments that I'm not involved with, um, some, of, some of which I was on set for, actually, to see. Um, because there is there's a little bit of CGI in the movie, but most of it is uh, practical effects, which is also really really fun and exciting. And so there was some, uh, well, the teddy bear they built the teddy bear, and the teddy bear uh, is capable of different things, <laughs> and uh, that's really fun. I mean, it's so great as an actor to have tactile things that you can hold and and be scared of. 
you know, you're not sk staring at a green screen and pretending to be scared of something that they're telling you is there, which they're going to paint in afterwards. So it might even be something completely different to what you imagined. So it's really great to have something in front of you, like that's the scary thing um, that you have to run from or, or be terrified by. Um, and there were some really great uh, practical aspects to this. Um, which I could talk about afterwards, but but uh, but it, it was very fun, and I I was honestly most excited about those aspects of it. Um, and it was the same when we did Walking Dead. Like all of the um, walkers on that show were real and in front of you. You know, they have these amazing special effects that you just react to that, which is fantastic. Yeah, and I think even as a viewer, you can tell. You can tell. You know, it's almost oh yeah, like absolutely. Like the Star Wars yeah. effect. You know, we talk about the Star Wars effect of those first three movies. It was all very real stuff. And then when the prequels came out, it was all CGI. It's like, you could tell, mm -hmm. you know, and whether the movie was... Well, know. yeah, and they even went back to the originals and tinkered with them a bit. And you lose a bit of the yeah, yeah. groundedness of it. The real stuff that comes through. Uh, I wanted to quickly, just because we mentioned it in Prodigal Son, because I know, you, mm. know after the, you know, after the second season was kind of concluded, just to say that story and the way you guys played it and that cast and yeah. the level of acting that went on to that... Was there more story that you wanted, that they wanted to tell, that you wanted to be a part of, do you think? Yeah, I mean, there's always, there was so much uh, story there. The difficulty with the show really was, it's like prison break, you know, like, what do you do once they break out of prison, you know? So we broke Michael out a couple of times. Um, but then what is, what is the show? Because it only really works if he's uh, at the prison. But, but so we did... You know, he he daydreamed about him, or he dreamt about him in different places. So that was fun. Um, I mean, I've been saying like it would be fun to like for them to go on the run together and and um, solve crimes across America, kind of thing. You know, but uh, but you know, something like that's kind of quite hard to put together. Yeah, I mean, there was lots of stories to tell. Uh, I think everyone on that show was incredibly well cast, and um, we were able to play with genre a lot on that show. And it was, and I think sometimes that worked against it because people didn't quite know what they were watching. Like sometimes it was funny. Sometimes it was scary. Sometimes it was really emotional. Um, and it all worked because everyone was so capable uh, of playing their part. Um, and it was in Michael and I's relationship in the, in the show was so grounded and real. And I mean, Michael, I used to watch him do stuff. That I'm like, I can't believe you're getting away with that performance. <laughs> but he but he is because he's so brilliant and so grounded. And sometimes I would find myself on set just looking and going, wow, that was great. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and then, seriously, it was like it was like watching high art acting, like masterclass mm -hmm. type of stuff, even though it wasn't the traditional masterclass type of genre or story, you know, like somehow yeah. that that landed and that's that's really rare that you get something like that. Yeah, I, I, you know, it's a bummer. Like I said, if we'd have been on the air like 10 years ago, I think we'd have been the biggest show on TV, you know. Um, but we, it's a different, it's just a different landscape now. And we weren't quite popular enough. And COVID did kind of bring us down. The show was very expensive to shoot during COVID. And I think at the end of the day, the numbers just didn't um, work out, which is what it is. It's a, you know, it's a business. Sure. So um, yeah, it was a bummer. But it was honestly exhausting to shoot i was like you know in every single day and um and you're also like kind of captain of the ship as well you're making sure everyone else is okay around you off camera you know um and you know you have to lead by example um and it was a very stressful part the guy was like emotionally on the edge the entire time um so it was pretty exhausting but very rewarding i mean i've said it a lot but i on the walking dead i love that character and i love that show but i i was always like well, i'm not quite getting enough to do and then prodigal son was like okay here you go do everything all at once um and so nowadays i'm like i'm really enjoying like coming in and doing imaginary i wasn't in every single day i'm not carrying the movie it's dewanda's movie she's fantastic and uh, i get to watch everyone else be great and there's no pressure on me um so that's wonderful and uh and really lovely to be able to pop in and do that um yeah i feel very very lucky as i said yeah. I'm, I'm excited to see the movie with an audience yeah um i want to ask about horizon but i'll quickly the one thing i'll say about the walking dead is around here it gives my favorite argument with my wife mm -hmm. and that i you know the people will ask the questions like where would you go where would you mm -hmm. hide what weapon will you use i'm always quick to say become a zombie just give in. It's so much easier. <laughs> you don't have to be exhausted running the whole time. 
You don't have to eat. You don't have to worry about sleep. Just become a zombie. Let it. Let well, it you already are. Everyone already is on that show. You know, like you die and, and you become one. And so you say that, but when I died on that show, people were like, well, didn't you want to be? I'm like, no, no. I did not want to sit in makeup for hours and hours. I wear a latex hood. Like, no, 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 no. Those guys on that show who play, the guys and girls who play the walkers, I mean, they deserve medals because they bake in the sun they're in very uncomfortable positions and they're wearing all this makeup they have to get in earlier than us in the morning and leave later than us at night that's the hardest job on that show and um so i would not join you in being a pretend zombie but in the real world i'm not sure i would either i don't know (laughs) yeah that's what i'm saying pretend zombie that sounds like a lot of that still defeats the whole purpose but real zombie easy street right there that's okay you're a special person kyle As long as you don't eat your family, that's where it gets a little more. Sure, well, there's no guarantees. No guarantee. <laughs> um, Horizon. So we coming up. Yeah. So this is a movie, a story that I, I think I read this, that Kevin Costner has been, he's had it in his back pocket for over 30 years, like 35 years or something. Yeah, like he's been writing this and working on this since the 80s. And it started as uh, one film, I think. And then it became four. And I think now we might be down to three, but I don't know. Uh, we've shot two of them um, and it's this amazing western saga as an American, an American saga um, epic film and I, I just couldn't I mean, we, we shot, shot it in Utah and if you haven't been to Utah it's just stunning um, scenery and I've got film from my iPhone uh, of uh, and I was on the wagon train in the movie so we've got all these wagons and uh, horses and people riding everywhere. And we're out in the middle of nowhere in Utah. Got my phone out and filmed. And, and it was just like being on a set in the 50s. Like the only difference would I've been saying is the size of the cameras. Because everything else was there. It was, would have been exactly, it's, I cried. I'm, not, I'm not, not joking. I'm not exaggerating. I cried on set because I was just like, sometimes you have these moments where, the reason why you got into it comes to the forefront. And like, when I was a kid, I wanted to be in a movie. I wanted to be in a movie, first of all. And this sounds so stupid. Like Harry Styles got in trouble for saying this one for Don't Worry Darling. But like, I I think this feels more like a movie than Don't Worry Darling. Maybe, I don't know, but I would say it did. Um, But you're just, you you just couldn't believe you you were there. And in the, you're in this movie. You're in this movie that you've seen a bunch of times in this Western, cool um setting and it's so much so that like <laughs> kevin did have to come over to me and be like okay just you're a real person <laughs> you know kind of thing because you're just you can't believe it you're like i'm in this movie and i'm playing this character and i'm like no no, no. okay calm down you just you're real and you have a real relationship with this person this person i just had to calm down a bit because i was so excited and honored um he gave he um zoomed me uh when i was in in a bath where I come from in England with my parents um, and my wife was giving our son a bath downstairs and uh, a bath in bath and um, I had this zoom with Kevin and and uh, the casting director was on the zoom and was like hi Tom okay so here's Kevin and I hadn't I hadn't auditioned my um, my manager had sent some tapes over of like oh this is Tom this is what he does and then suddenly I was talking to Kevin and during the chat because I'm used to having chats with directors and, and casting directors where you're kind of still you're talking about how much you love the project and you really want to do it and blah, blah, blah. And as the meeting went on, it became apparent that he was trying to convince me. <laughs> I was like, I just thought, okay, shut up, Tom. Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. Just listen to what he's saying. Say and, yes, then, and, you know, and then you. it ended with, it was amazing. And it ended with him like, so I'd love for you to come. And, and, and I, oh, yeah. And then I went, I put the phone down and I went, I got really emotional. And I went down to my wife and I was like, I think Kevin Costner just offered me a job like face to face and it was just oh my god what a dream and then it just continued to be a dream and and I took my family we got married um in New York and we drove across country with our son uh in a in a van and we were we stopped off at Utah on the way and I did my um costume fitting and so they were there with me to see um the beginnings of the world and it was a real uh real experience and I, I'm excited for it to come out I'm excited for something um like that to come out it's a real you know I, I, I saw a test screening and it was pretty long and I was like oh this is long but actually by the end of it I wanted to see more and it is two parts like you need to see 
the second one after the first and you you want to like i i've been in it and i know it and i thought oh is this gonna feel really long and it doesn't and i'm not a big fan of the really long movies nowadays I'm like this is this is getting a bit i haven't watched flower moon yet because it's three and a half hours i'm like oh it's long but but and i'm not just saying this because i'm in it but i did it didn't feel the time and because there's lots of different stories um it really is a tapestry of stories so each story is not three hours you know so it's I mean, maybe half an hour, I guess, on each thing. Anyway, I've rambled now, but I, no, I, I'm very excited about that as well. I'm so excited about it for all the reasons you said. I mean, a wide scope epic movie, you know, because we don't get yeah. a lot of those. And, and of course, Costner knows how to do those. He's he's done yeah. these before and he's, yeah. you know, succeeded many times before. And, and spe- you know, the things I read about it, I mean, um, you know, telling this part or era around the Civil War and mm-hmm. how that lands with everything that's had, like, couldn't have been more perfectly timed there. And, mm-hmm. And just, um, you know, I was laughing at the little teaser because all you see is is Kevin with a gun, and I thought that says it oh, all, no. really. That's oh, all you no. need to say. That's. <laughs> I was like, okay, <laughs> yeah. Warner Brothers, Warner Brothers, um, yeah, put that out. That was that was pretty funny, but it is, you know, that's the demographic as well. It's like, yeah, I want to see Kevin Costner on a horse firing a gun. Like, that's, fantastic so, and I, but i can't wait to see the first trailer i mean that's gonna be great i think it, i don't know this but i think um it's warner brothers so i think they might put it out with the dune um movie when it comes out i think that makes sense um and it's a similar kind of epic scope thing um so i'm not sure when that is i think it's in march right. so uh, i'm excited um for that yeah but first imaginary in a, in a month yeah and uh and it puts you back on a horse and i only want to say that because i'm in louisville kentucky here where the horses are all around and, and seeing you back in okay. luck and all of that. So uh, I'm excited. About, yeah. We, yeah. I, you know what? I just went, I took my son and wife to the Santa Anita racetrack uh, on the day after Christmas this year. Cause we're friend. We got friendly with the people who are running it now. And um, we had a wonderful day and my son absolutely loved it. And I actually, I had not been back in 10, 12 years. And since we finished the show and uh, yeah, it's a bummer. Like I was, that's another show that got shut down and, you know and them's the breaks but uh but i was talking to the guy who runs the track now and he said you know it's a shame because if if we started it now like i think we could make it work and it would we'd still be doing it um but that was an amazing introduction to hollywood for me that was michael mann and dustin hoffman and nick nolte all these fantastic people um and it was a bit of a dream but then that got shut down and then i went and did the position um with ben kingsley and stellan skarsgård which i couldn't have done um and we are in the process of putting together the sequel of, for that now um which hopefully i'll be filming pretty soon so uh you know it's just funny how things work out and i'm ne- i'm never like I- i've always been moving forward i'm always looking to the next thing and like okay we've done this and and uh what's next and life surprises you, you know you got uh, that luck got shut down and and then this huge movie where I was the lead came along it just you can't ever keep yourself down too too much because something else will come and it really it really will I I mean the the hardest thing was having kids and uh, being like okay I really need to make money now and I really need to work but uh, another actor said to me uh, it's Michael Cudlitz actually from um, Walking Dead he said uh, you know kids bring prosperity and and uh, don't don't worry about it and and I think that's true actually um, because I think they bring a lot of light and uh, joy and and it, and then that comes off of you you know and people people are attracted to that um so yeah excited to see what's next <laughs> yeah i i'm i'm glad you keep landing in the great places uh imaginary uh so excited for that to come out and especially to see you in horizon after that uh congrats on this year everything come out at once tom seriously thank you so much for taking the time to talk about it thank you kyle i hope i didn't ramble too much <laughs> that's good and thanks to my guest also thanks to you for uh, for checking out the episode in the series. Before you get out of here, hit that subscribe button. Again, uh, you get three brand new interviews every single week. New and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at uh, right here on YouTube or, of course, anywhere in podcast land, including iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podchaser, NPR, or WFPK.org as well. A great way to keep up with your favorite artists and discover new ones as well. Then after that, actually head over to WFPK.org. That's where I do a show, Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern. It's an hour full of song premieres, music news, anniversary spins, bonus interviews, Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern at WFPK.org. 
Consequence has your music and film news. You can also find me on the social media spots, uh, Facebook, Instagram, mostly on Twitter. All three of them, the address is at Kyle Meredith. Do hope you like and follow along. That does it for another edition. I'm Kyle Meredith. I'll see you next time.